Hey guys, and welcome back to another video um, made by me for more of a guide this time. We're going to discuss the best way to set up a NAS at home to run either a media server, a home lab. It, it really doesn't matter. It's more or less for anything you may pick up over the next couple of years. Now, from my experience, when I set up mine, my main concern was storage. Because I wanted to make sure I had enough storage to last me five, ten years, and I didn't have to worry about re going out and reconfiguring a whole new NAS system and getting it set up. So there's two things you need to know about this. There's commercial grade way to go, and there's consumer grade way to go. Now, when you go commercial, there's a couple of different ways you can set this up. I mean, it, it can be really confusing, but the main pros and cons I put on the screen here to go over with you guys. So if you're going commercial, the cost of the product will be greatly reduced for performance, meaning you could get um, a lot of different types of performing like 24 core or 14 thread uh, systems that are going to be compared to what you get on a Ryzen chip if you were to get that will be extremely cost effective like it would cost like maybe 25 to 50 bucks for a nice processor upgrade on a regular like ThinkStation or a work uh, force Z420 from HP or Lenovo no, another pro is the hardware is meant to last. I mean, the hardware you buy, the reason you're buying it from secondhand, normally when schools or offices have servers like ThinkStations, the reason they order them is because they have a manufacturer warranty, meaning that they get security updates to a certain point, and they're secure for that point. Now, what they do is when they get these past these points, which are usually between three and five years, they'll let them go, and they'll sell them to secondhand users, which is when you benefit. You can then get your hardware and pick it up for maybe 75% uh, of what they would charge brand new and get them that'll run for basically five to 10 years with no issues with hardware upgrades. Uh, another thing is endless options for parts. There's multiple different Xeon or Threadripper setups you can do. There's different types of Intel versus Ryzen versus AMD versus all different types. You need to know though there's a couple cons to this way of going commercial. First off, if you live in the UK or one of the European states or countries, you're going to know that with the current crisis in Russia, um, you're going to have issues getting power at a cheap rate. So they're going to run a lot more power and they're going to need a lot more juice to run your server components. So that's one thing, you'll have a higher electricity bill. Uh, you have older hardware, usually this hardware isn't cutting edge brand new. For most people, this doesn't matter. It's more budget effective if you're going commercial. Um, not as much customization for spare parts. So as you notice over time, the parts become less and less fluid. They'll be more expensive to find. One thing I've noticed has come up with is RAM. When you're using ECC RAM, which is essentially RAM that is server grade, has failovers, um, it's more expensive and they're more complicated to order the parts because there's multiple different types of RAM in a class. Normally with consumer grade, you have DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, and that's what they are. You don't have to get a certain type of like RAM with consu with commercial. There's certain things as like DDR3, you know, 125 U, 125,000 U or dash E, and they're not always swap or you know you can't move them in between. And that's just for one DDR3 set. Let's say you go DDR4 at ECC 127,000 U. That's not as convertible as ECC DDR4 124,000 uh, 124, slash E. So there are always different types of, it's a lot more confusing with the, the, the way they order parts. They're also hard to repair. Some of them need proprietary tools. So you can't open your CPU sock without a proprietary tool that they sell you. Um, and you can't add extra space on cases. So that's the only want to swap out the case. Most of those cases are meant for customization. So you can't customize the case. They're meant for that only OEM set motherboard. You can't swap in a bigger case where you can add more hard drives, add more you know, CPU sockets, add different coolers. Those aren't meant for commercial grade. The last thing is there's less I.O. I mean, there's less I.O. you have to set up for your NAS or server. I mean, less USB ports, less HDMI ports, not as much auxiliary ports. All, you name it, you know, PCIe is less portage. So there's a lot of different things. I always recommend if you're going to go for the least expensive, you want to go cut through it, the smallest amount item-wise, price per dollar, go with commercial. Anything else, go with consumer. 
The pros to that are updated components. You'll have multiple different components you can update that are mostly newer components, meaning they'll run a lot quicker than those last gen upgrades. Uh, it'll include an upgrade path. So you can have a Ryzen for the next three years, and you can go to Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and they'll all work within your motherboard BIOS with maybe a quick motherboard BIOS update. Um, they're easier to navigate and find parts. Usually the parts are more clear and cut when it comes to going with the consumer grade hardware. You know, they say this will work in this socket. You can use apps such as PC Part Picker, which I'll show you, to find the right parts for you. And second, they're better for support on parts. Now, normally if you try to find support on, on a motherboard not booting or having error codes, you'll find a lot more support on threads with, with consumer parts than compared to these because most of these commercial parts will be found on different forums but they're very slim and few between and most of those you need a um, uh, a key for your like um, an enterprise purchase key to find those the cons are they're a bit pricier and some parts may fail quicker than commercial grade remember commercial grade are meant to stay the long run so just so you know for your own information I'm going to show you the best setup on what I did to pick my parts back when I was setting up my setup for my NAS so just for a little information, I would recommend going by these three principles. So one, this is an order on how you should pick your parts. You want to find your CPU first. Once you find your CPU, you can find what motherboard can socket into it. Once you find your case, you can figure out what motherboard can go into the case. Once you find your case, you can find the power supply that slots in your case that works with the motherboard and CPU. Then RAM and LSI HBA will come into play if you want to add more than one HTD or more than a couple HTD. And lastly, whatever money's left over, you go with the GPU. Now the first thing I recommend when setting these up is looking up a build guide. Find the best, whatever your price range is, gaming PC build, uh, in that price range. And that will give you an estimate of what you're looking for maybe with CPU wise, what you're maybe looking for for your motherboard, and you can work off there using a tool called Price Picker. Or PC Part Picker, sorry. So what I went with was first off my case, I got a fractal design set defined seven. It's a full size case and I knew that I wanted to have more than one hard drive. This one allows you to add up to 14 hard drives in one case. You just need to buy separate drive caddies. But essentially what it allows you to do is add multiple drive cages to this one PC using, and again, most motherboards don't supply more than four or five eSATA ports. Something you need to know what that is, you're gonna need an HPA. Essentially what an HPA does is it allows you to have multiple um, write-offs. So let's say you have, this goes in your PCIe slot. You can then attach this into this port, which is called an LSI port or an HPA port. Or I'm sorry, a SAS port. And the SAS then merges down to multiple different eSATA ports so it can read the data. These come in really good handy if you're using more than four ports and you don't want to use your motherboards um, HPA system or motherboards e status if you want to have more drives so the next thing once you have your cage which again I always recommend to find seven I've had no problems with it easy to configure many easy ways to configure with many um, cable runs cable ties um, great uh, support for hiding your cables underneath here and putting in your standard power supply so Next, now that we have our case in our, you know, we know what we want to use, I mainly use mine for specifically uh, hard drive storage and home lab support. So for my PC, I use it a lot for things like, like you know, Docker and, you know, VMs and running uh, WordPress, mainly for just that. But I also use it as a daily drive for current research and, and editing on those things and doing doc, doc work and all that kind of stuff. It's what I mainly use mine for. I have a Ryzen 5 5600G. Those don't, aren't, they aren't usually 136, they're usually a little bit less expensive than that if you can find them on used. I got mine used for around 90 bucks. So it's under about $100. And normally if you get it used, if it comes with a cooler, you're great, you're already set. But sometimes you have to buy one and those are run you about $10, $15 on eBay. You would want to probably go with a gaming key, a gaming motherboard, but make sure you have a lot of RAM slots. For me, I got mine on Amazon. So it was $128, it was an Asus Rogue Strix, V450F gaming motherboard. Now it accepts AMD Ryzen 2 AM4, but also accepts DDR4, and it had a bunch of cool uh, other things. You can find these on Amazon now for like $208. Don't pay that. Find a local one. I found one at um, uh, at the time of recording this on 
the January 12th of 2023. It's 137.39 and it, it allows up to four slots of DDR4 up to 64 gigs. Um, it's got UDIM for X memory slots, gigabit, display port, six times SATA slots. So the main reason I wanted this is because of the multiple SATA slots. So if I didn't want to use my HP, I had all these SATA slots to work with. So there's six right here. And it had a bunch of I.O. along with a bunch of other things, including accepting my Ryzen 5600G. So it's really up to you, but if you really want to find the best deal, first go on, you can go to PC Part Pickers. I'll list this in the description. And you go to Builder and choose your CPU. Since I chose the 5600G, I selected this. Click Add. Now from there, we can find compatible compatibility. So we just find choose the motherboard. So now I choose the motherboard that's compatible. It shows 419 motherboards that are compatible. So you have the X570, B55 Tomahawk, or 550, sorry, Tomahawk, B55, B550A Gaming. There's a bunch of different options. You can sort them by price, by comparison, by you know popularity. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can choose a motherboard. Just make sure you read into the details of what you exactly want in your build. Another thing to think about is graphics card. So with commercial, you really have to choose between a Quattro card because most commercial builds don't come with two A pins. So I can get an equivalent <coughs> to a 2060 by getting a P2000. That's a Quattro P2000. That'll run basically anything I need on transcoding or video rendering or whatever I need, and it's a pretty lightweight card. And at $174, beats out basically any 2060 you can get. But if I want to get a 2060, let's do it on uh, Geoforce RTX 2060. You can find them for about the same price. So take with what you what you will. Um, so it just depends on your price to performance. Now, the last thing you want to worry about when doing this is you want to worry about your HDDs and your LSIs. So with HDDs, there's a bunch of different options. You can, I mean, I recommend the more the merrier. So one thing you can do is six terabyte EXO drives. These are pretty nice because they come in around sixty-five to sixty-five or sorry, fifty-nine to like eighty bucks, and get them second hand. But make sure if you're gonna buy the six terabyte drives, you test them, put them through a twenty-four hour stress test. If you hear any noise, any clanking, anything, send them back and get a replacement. Because you know, buy from reputable reputable dealers. Anyone with a 99 rating on eBay is usually okay. Just make sure they're reputable. <clears throat> the last thing you need to worry about, once we have our case, our motherboard, and our CPU, is our RAM and our power supply. A lot of people say that RAM is fine at 2666. I personally don't think so. Um, if you're going to buy RAM, so with RAM, I always recommend starting with 32, and you can move your way up. For me, I started with 32 gigs because I ran a lot of um, home server VM things. And then once I went up to 32 and my, my uh, memory started getting bottlenecked, I upgraded to 64 gigs. The reason I did that is because when you upgrade to 64 gigs, that gives you more headroom to have as live as you know available space. So I was running a lot of VMs, a lot of um, you know heavy intensive processes, and that just bottlenecked my CPU, which then started to crash a lot. And, Cause a lot of issues, it'll cause a slot on your performance. So, what I always recommend is starting with 32 and going a little bit higher. As you can see, you can get a 32 gig kit at 3200 megahertz. Now, I don't recommend going below 3000 megahertz. <clears throat> going below 3000 megahertz means you're going to drop in performance. You want a faster XMP clock and you want to have a faster clock because that means that's how fast the processing information is going to go to the CPU and come back to your memory. So I recommend going above 3,000 megahertz. You can do 32, you can do 36. I found 3,200 to be the sweet spot at CL16. So I got this six, this 32 gig kit, 216 gig kit, 216 gigabit DDR4 memories for around $65. That was a great deal and I'd always recommend it. You can always pick um, other options that may be cheaper or better, but you really have to search for them. So. If you guys enjoyed this video or have any questions, let me know. I'll list all these parts I listed in the description. Um, the uh, uh, Define 7XL case, the LSI HBA, the RAM, as well as the motherboard if you guys want to replicate it, along with the Ryzen 5600G.
But a great place to start is finding a tutorial on how to find one that someone else has written that may be like good memory wise um, to like give you an idea of what you feel like you need to accomplish your home lab and then work up from there. But it really depends. You need to start off with what you want first. Are you going to be doing a lot of multi-processing things like multiple apps running at once? Are you gonna, Then you'll want to go with Ryzen. Okay, because it's a good multi-processing. It's got multiple cores and it makes it the best you possible experience. Next thing you figure out, do you need a lot of SATA ports? Do you need an M.2 storage? Do you need SSD storage? Do you want a, more RAM slots? Do you want to upgrade from 3264? Are you thinking about multiple PCIe cards? That all depends on multiple choices. You really need to go out for what your personal needs. There's no real cookie cutter way to get this correctly done. It goes off what your personal preference is. So like I said, finding one of these tutorials, you know, searching up um, the best $500 gaming PC build and then accommodating it to your setup is the best way to go about doing this. You could also find other, there's a couple of YouTubers, one that I like is, personally, so one person does great commercial based like setups that has a lot of information that kind of inspired this video was a guy named a cheer like who I'll link in the description and he's got a couple tutorials this one particularly which is um, a $500 14 core fire hazard which is aside from the name is very knowledgeable on what you should get and what you shouldn't get. So if you're going looking to go commercial, I'd recommend checking out this guy's channel. He doesn't just do that. He does a lot more things than just this one tutorial. He has a lot of these commercial business tutorials on how to set up a good workstation, um, NAS, or video gaming PC that's going to be in a budget. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I gave some insight on what you guys might think about for our next video. I just thought I'd give some insight on how I chose my setup for my personal NAS, homemade NAS that I have Windows running on and what you guys may think of you want in the future. Thanks guys, please comment, rate, subscribe, check out more videos like mine.